So the last episode of The Clone Wars came out like a week ago, and yeah, it was fantastic, but I think the ending scenes are what make this finale so strong. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to write a proper ending like Star Wars The Clone Wars. So the scenes where Ahsoka buries the clones and where Darth Vader appears I think are two excellent scenes to conclude this show, and there are many reasons why I feel this. But if we want to understand what makes this ending so great, we need to understand what makes a good ending in general. So there are a few important traits that can make up a good ending, but I feel the most important one is to provide a meaningful resolution. Now what do I mean by this? If you want to know if an ending is meaningful, you need to ask yourself, did the conclusions of the characters' stories leave a lasting impact on the audience that represents the theme of the story? So while analyzing the Clone Wars, we need to understand what's the theme of the story, do the endings of the characters represent that theme, and does this ending leave a lasting impact? So first, let's look at the theme of the story. If you've watched my video on Luke Skywalker and the Last Jedi, then you know the importance of theme. The definition of theme is its underlying message or big idea. In other words, what critical belief about life is the author trying to convey? In this case, it would be the storyteller, not the author. So what is the theme of the Clone Wars? Well, I would argue that the theme of the Clone Wars revolves around the horrors of war. Now I know this might be surprising to a certain group of people, but the Clone Wars has an anti-war message and goes into detail about all the negative effects of war. This is the theme. So now that we know the theme of the Clone Wars, do the characters' endings represent that theme in an emotional way? Now the Clone Wars has a lot of characters, but fortunately for the show, almost all of them get resolutions in Revenge of the Sith. So what about the characters that aren't in Revenge of the Sith, mainly Rex and Ahsoka? First, let's look at Rex. Rex's purpose in this show is to be the face of the clones, and I would argue to illustrate the humanity that isn't shown in the films. If you want more details on how the Clone Wars really expanded upon the clones, then you can go check out one of my earlier videos on the clones. So go check that out after this video. But in short, we see how strong the brotherhood is between the clones throughout the show, especially between Rex and the 501st. So how does the ending of his story tie into the theme of anti-war? Well, the Clone Wars really taps into the tragedy of Order 66. We see Order 66 turn the clones from real people into basically droids in an instant. After Rex gets his chip removed, he's faced with the reality that all of his brothers are now against him. In a beautiful scene, we see how hard this is for Rex. And at the end when they escape, Rex looks upon the graves of all of his clone brothers. Looking upon these graves, we get a strong sense of injustice. These clones were great soldiers and overall good people, but at the end of the day they died because of the war, and more specifically Palpatine, a corrupt politician who happens to be a Sith Lord. It is tragic to see the graves of all these clones because of this injustice, so the end of Rex's story does feel tragic. But how about Ahsoka? Ahsoka's story in Season 7 focuses a lot on her relationship with the Jedi. In Season 5, she left the Order because she lost faith in what a Jedi represented. In the arc with the Martez sisters, she learns the importance of what a Jedi should represent. However, at the end of the season, the ignorance and the blindness of the Jedi allowed Order 66, and we see Ahsoka standing in front of the ashes of what her life used to represent. Ahsoka learned the true meaning of a Jedi, but just as she learned this, all of the Jedi are now dead, and she is forced to abandon that path. The war took away everything she cared about. This is tragic. So it is clear that the ending of these characters' stories matched the theme of the show, but with how the show put in the time to illustrate how strong the Brotherhood is of the clones, and how important the Jedi are to Ahsoka, we really do feel that strong sense of injustice. And for the first time in Star Wars, it doesn't end on a hopeful note, but on a tragic note. Now this doesn't just apply to Rex and Ahsoka, but also Anakin. We see Vader return to the ashes of what his life used to be, similar to Ahsoka. However, it is far more tragic for Anakin, because this at the end of the day is all of his fault. 
he was the one who decided to turn to the dark side and helped execute all the Jedi. Now, granted, since we can't see Anakin's face, we don't really know exactly what he is thinking, but based on the musical tones and the body language, I feel a strong sense of remorse in this scene. Anakin began the show surrounded by his closest friends and family, but ended the show in a walking tomb, all by himself, with a reminder of what was. And as Vader walks away, he has lost everyone he loves and is alone. And I know that it's such a small detail, but I love that we can see Anakin's eyes. Not so much because it's a callback to A New Hope, but because it adds another layer of tragedy. This great man we once knew is now trapped behind that mask for the rest of his life. This single scene may be the most tragic thing in Star Wars, and the cherry on top of it all is that in these two scenes, not a single line of dialogue is spoken. I challenge any of you watching this right now to see if you can remember the last line of dialogue in the show. Don't remember? It's because the last line was spoken a full 5 minutes before the credits roll. This ending manages to capture all of these emotions in two scenes without a single line of dialogue. This is fantastic storytelling. And that is how you write a meaningful and powerful ending. Thank you for watching another one of my videos. <laughs> oh, that was awful. It's not so easy to do a Kylo impression with the helmet. Before I do my usual plugs, I would just like to wish everyone a happy Mother's Day. Uh, at the end of the day, Star Wars is about family, and so is Mother's Day. So, uh, if you're with your mom during quarantine, just go wish her a happy Mother's Day. And if you're not with her, then text her. Um, on another note, uh, you'll also be able to see me on a few other channels. Recently, I've been collabing with a few new friends. Uh, that includes my friends The Gungan Dungeon, Mad Max, Star Wars Only, and The Grey Council. Uh, I'll put their channel links um, either here or here. I don't know which side it is because of the camera. But you can click on them there and subscribe to them if you haven't. Um, and yes, I gotta do my usual plugs. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter at TheGoldMan25. Uh, you can see updates there, and also I'm just relatively active on Twitter. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to unite the Claude Squad, and I'll see you guys next time.